Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and if you've been following my Facebook page, you might have seen me post a picture of this the other day. This is a Game Boy Color that I found hiding at my mother's house. I forgot I even owned this thing. I bought it almost 20 years ago, and it is still in perfect working order, and I figured I would uh, try to find some neat things that I could do with this. And one of the things that I thought of immediately was picking up a flash cartridge. This is called the EverDrive GB, and it's made by a guy named Crix out of the Ukraine, and I bought this one from StoneAgeGamer.com, and and uh, what it does is it allows you to play uh, games on your original hardware that you might have found on the internet. So, for example, if you've got uh, some homebrew games that you want to play or fan translations of games that never reached your region, or maybe there's a few rare games out there that nobody can afford or find, uh, you could probably find the ROM somewhere, download it onto the uh, cartridge here, and play them again on the original hardware. So it's a really uh, neat way to pretty much load up whatever games you want onto a single cartridge and not have to swap them out. And it works uh, exceptionally well with this Game Boy Color as well well as other uh, devices that are compatible with the Game Boy. I'll talk more about compatibility in a little bit. And then I started digging around my house here and I uncovered my Game Boy Advance SP here as well. And I figured, hey, you know what? While I'm at it, I'm just gonna get another one for that device. And this is called the EverDrive GBA. And it works in a similar fashion in that you have your SD card here that you can load up with game ROMs and then play those ROMs on the original hardware. We're gonna talk about both of these and talk about how they work here in just a second. But I do wanna mention in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased these with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's step through the hardware real quick. We'll begin with the GB version here, the Game Boy version. And as you saw earlier, there is an SD card slot here where you load up your games. Very simple to get the games loaded onto here. You just uh, pop the card into a card reader on your computer and drag the files over. You also need to bring over the operating system file that you can download from the Crix website or from Stone Age Gamer. You put it in a folder. They've got instructions. As to how to do it, and that is what the uh, Game Boy will look for when it boots up so you can select which game to play. So very minimal setup here to get everything up and running. You do need to make sure your micro SD card is formatted uh, in the FAT32 file system. Generally, cards that are like one to four gigabytes in size are formatted with that file system, but if it is not, you'll need to do that on your Windows PC to get that working. And if you have a Mac or another uh, computer, you might have to go have a friend format it for you. But generally, I think, again, if you look for like a one to four gigabyte SD card, uh, you shouldn't have any issues there. Now you might notice that there is a battery here and that is for battery backup uh, because there are games like Zelda and many others that allow you to save your progress in game. And back in the old days, we didn't have flash memory available to us for that. So it would actually keep a uh, little piece of memory active with the battery here and that battery will eventually die. Uh, but you can just uh, pop open the case here with a Phillips head screwdriver and uh, swap out that battery for a new one. So not a big deal there. And one of the cool things about how this works is that when you uh, put, a, put in a different game, it will then back up the save game for the game that you're replacing. So for example, if I was playing Zelda and I finished playing Zelda and popped in Mario or something, it will actually copy the save game data to the SD card and then load it back in the next time that I put a Zelda on my device here. So pretty simple way to uh, swap things out, really uh, almost transparent to the user. Uh, this cartridge is about the same size as a traditional Game Boy cartridge here, as you can see. So uh, not all that big and you can uh, easily slip it in the back of your Game Boy here and be good to go. It is compatible with just about every Game Boy that has ever been made. It probably is compatible with all of them. It also works with the Super Game Boy that you plugged into your Super Nintendo, but it will not work with like the Retron 5 and some of those other emulation consoles because those dump out the ROM and then uh, kind of run an emulation. So this is only going to work really with the traditional hardware uh, from Nintendo, but it works exceptionally well with that as you'll see in a minute. Now the EverDrive GBA uh, is very similar in how it works. You got the SD card slot up here. There is also a battery backup that you can replace if you ever had that battery die in you. Again, a very simple uh, Phillips head screwdriver will get you into that cartridge to replace it. The only difference on this one is that it is a little larger than than the traditional cartridge is. So while the originals here would fit uh, flush to the Game Boy Advance SP and the original, for example, uh, this one will stick out a little bit. Uh, not as far as a traditional Game Boy cartridge would on your Game Boy Advance, but it does stick out a little bit more than a regular Game Boy Advance cartridge does, but it really didn't make uh, that big of a deal to me. I was still able to play uh, very comfortably on my SP here. So let's go boot up our Game Boy here and see how all of this works. 
All right, so I got the cartridge installed. Let's boot it up and see how this thing works. I'll take you through uh, what will work about 99% of the time. This is compatible with just about every Game Boy game you can think of, including the Game Boy Color games, which are a lot larger than the originals were. So we're going to start off here with uh, one of the first games I ever bought on my Game Boy back in 1989, which is the Castlevania Adventure. I'm going to hit load and start here. And as you can see here, it just uh, erased the cartridge and then wrote the uh, ROM file to it because there is internal flash memory on this cartridge that it runs the games from. And if I were to turn this off and turn it back on again and hit the start button, it will load back up um, this game. So you have uh, some persistence of the ROM that's loaded on the cartridge. So again, if I, I can go back in here, first of all, and start playing the game. And as you can see, it runs just like the original did because this is the original code uh, running on the original hardware. It really works just like you would expect it to. So pretty simple to get a game up and running here and be on your way. So if I turn it off and then turn it back on again, which I'll do right now, uh, once it gets its operating system loaded up, because we loaded up Castlevania before, if I hit the start button here, it'll just take me right back to that game. So you can uh, keep some persistence there. So let that load up there, and there you go. So that is going to be the process for about 99% of the games that you run on this cartridge. You just do that load and start, and you're off and running. Now, this is going to work with all of the Nintendo Game Boy hardware, as well as the uh, Super Nintendo Game Boy adapter that was out uh, back in the 90s. So any kind of real hardware it's going to work with, I would imagine if there ever is an FPGA-based uh, Game Boy console, it'll probably work with that. Now, what I just did uh, a few minutes ago was load up the Game Boy Color game Shantae, which is a bigger game. Uh, that one's about 8 megabytes, and that one takes longer to load here, but you can see that the big games uh, work just as well. You probably wait about a minute and a half, two minutes for the game to uh, load in there, but you saw that it just booted up here immediately because I have it already installed on the card. So again, if you come back to that game later, uh, it doesn't take uh, any loading time at all because it is already loaded on the cartridge's flash memory. And what you'll see here also is that I had a save game file here. Let me hit the start button here and get over to that. Uh, you'll see that I had a game already loaded on it here, and uh, there you go. So file one uh, will take me back to my save game that I had uh, put on here prior. So it is working pretty well to uh, make sure those save games stay in place. Now, if I turn off the uh, Game Boy here and reboot it and try to load a different game, I wanted to show you what will happen when that occurs. So let's get back to the uh, operating system menu here. We'll go over to uh, my demo screen, and I'll load up, uh, for example, Motocross Maniacs, another one of my favorite games from the original days. And when I hit load and start here, you can see it says backup save RAM. And what it did there is it copied the save game data that I had for Shantae uh, from the volatile memory of the cartridge, and it put it onto the SD card card, which I could then back up on my computer. So you have a really nice persistent uh, backup of your save game data. That was something you didn't get uh, back in the old days. And you can see here, uh, Motocross uh, Maniacs here is up and running. This is a really fun game, by the way. Uh, we didn't get Excite Bike on the Game Boy right away, but we did get uh, this game, which was a ton of fun to play. So I'm, I have to kind of get, get back into it again. But uh, there you go. You can see how all of that works. Now, compatibility feels pretty complete on here. I have not encountered any games that I wanted to play that I couldn't play on this device. And I wanted to show you you uh, some of the things that you can do to configure the game. So you'll see that uh, you have an option here to do a load and start or a load only. So let's do the load only here and I'll show you what this does because uh, there are some settings on here that you can adjust if you are having compatibility issues. And I will let this one load up here. There is a, a light on the back of the cartridge that indicates what it is doing. So you uh, know not to turn it off when that red light is on and blinking. And this is an example of a larger game uh, that takes a little bit longer to get up and running because there is uh, more data to write, and this system is not known for its high speed of I.O., input-output for data. So you will wait a little bit, as I mentioned, for uh, some of the larger games here. But you can see it brought me back to the menu because uh, what I can do here is hit the select button and uh, pull up the options menu to uh, do some additional things. So uh, this game, Pokemon, uses the MBC3 mapper, and uh, what Nintendo did on their main console at the time, the NES, and as well as the, on the Game Boy, is they allowed uh, for extensions of the system on the cartridge. There were chips that uh, developers put into the cartridges to have uh, the Game Boy do things that it was not designed to do initially. So there, those are called mappers, and this supports uh, MBC3, as you can see here, but it also supports uh, everything from 5, uh, 1, 2, 3, as we just saw, uh, and just a straight ROM load. So what will happen in here is it'll detect what uh, mapper it should be using, and you can override these settings if you're having some compatibility issues with some homebrew or something like that. So you do have the ability here to uh, fine-tune your experience if the game is not working properly. Again, I haven't had to use this at all. It seems to be detecting everything properly, but uh, that is there if you are maybe doing some homebrew development or have a homebrew game that uh, just isn't working right. It does not have real-time clock 
support. So if you are running into issues with games that uh, require that, you may have to find a patched ROM that corrects that issue, uh, or you can use the Game Genie cheats here and uh, type in those cheat codes here on this screen. So you do get some basic Game Genie functionality, and that's pretty much it. There isn't a lot to this because this is a pretty simple hardware platform that it's running on, but it does accomplish the goal of getting multiple games loaded up onto a single cartridge so that you can take everything with you in one convenient package versus a pile of games and the Game Boy itself along with your batteries and all the other stuff you need to bring. The Game Boy Advance version here works very similar to uh, the Game Boy version here, so I'll load this up here and uh, see how this works. I'll turn my backlight off on this one, and... Uh, we'll let this load up here, and again, it looks very, very similar to what we just saw, so we'll go over to my demo folder. The difference, though, is that the A button is your action button, whereas B is the action button on the other platform. And I'll load up Wing Commander, for example, and just like before, I can select only and just load it up onto the uh, cartridge's internal flash, or I can do a uh, select and start here, which I'll do real quick. So it's going to copy the backup memory from the last game that I played, uh, reboot the console, and off we go again. Uh, this will support games up to 32 megabytes in size, and and I believe this actually works with just about every game out there because this cartridge does have real-time clock support. So there are some things that uh, this one provides that uh, the other one doesn't, and that is how that works. I'm just going to reboot real quick, though, because uh, there are a few other things that are unique to this platform that are not on the original. The first is that you can, if you are a hacker, uh, go into that ROM and uh, look at its hex. So let's go back over to my demo folder here. We'll just uh, select only here and get that cartridge loaded back into memory. And if I uh, hit my uh, action button again here and go over to hex view, it'll actually give me uh, the hexadecimal of that entire ROM. So you can kind of get a feel for what is in that file as you're walking through it there. And because the Game Boy Advance has uh, much more horsepower at its disposal than the original Game Boy, they were able to add a few other things to the options here. So for example, I can go into my uh, recently played games, for example, and pop those up. I can also have it do things like load up a random game or something along those lines. But another interesting component of this, let me just reboot it real quick, uh, is that this can run emulators. And uh, you can get those emulators, of course, loaded up uh, onto the cartridge here. And they are adding support for those emulators inside of the uh, system here running on the cartridge. So for example, here I have an NES game uh, that I have stored on uh, this uh, SD card, and I can just actually run it here uh, from the Game Boy Advance using its emulator that uh, runs uh, NES games. And you can download that stuff. Crix has instructions as, as to how to get all that set up, but it's a seamless interface here to uh, load up a NES game in emulation. I have to adjust some of the screen here to get it working better, but uh, in emulation here on the Game Boy Advance, which is pretty cool. So there are some emulators out there for this platform, given that this is running with a uh, faster 32-bit risk processor, and uh, you can take advantage of that, and they're working on integrating a lot of those emulators into the main interface here. So there are, of course, better handheld emulating platforms out there, but I thought that was kind of a neat thing to add into the mix here. Now, the Game Boy Advance does play original Game Boy games, but if you just buy the Advance cartridge here, you have to run those Game Boy games in emulation. It still feels about the same. Uh, again, there's a Game Boy emulator for uh, the Game Boy Advance that makes all of this work, but if you are looking for the true Game Boy experience on your Game Boy Advance, then you'll need to plug in uh, the EverDrive GB into your Game Boy Advance to get them to work. But the good news is it's compatible and it will stick out just like your original Game Boy cartridges do. Uh, so you might have a more accurate experience here uh, using this cartridge versus this one because this will run in emulation, uh, whereas this one will work with uh, Nintendo's built-in uh, backwards compatibility. So I, for example, I can go back over here to the demo here and uh, load up uh, Motocross Maniacs on this one and I can do all the same stuff with the screen that I can do with uh, the original Game Boy games running on the Game Boy Advance. You have lots of options here. If you have a Game Boy Advance, if you buy two cartridges, or you can just run stuff in emulation on here. I didn't really notice any real big difference between uh, running in emulation versus using Nintendo's true backup compatibility, but if you are a purist uh, and you want to run them the way they're supposed to be running, then you need to buy both cartridges because this will present itself as a Game Boy Advance cartridge, and this one will present itself as a Game Boy cartridge, and that will uh, trigger the hardware to do what it's supposed to do uh, with the right cartridge here. And just like the Game Boy variant of this cartridge, it will work on uh, all of the Game Boy Advanced handhelds, including that tiny one that came out, uh, the SP here, as well as my old one hanging up on the shelf over there, too. It will also work with the Game Boy Advanced player that is on the GameCube. But again, uh, like the other cartridge here, uh, if you have the uh, Retron 5 or some other device that plays G uh, Game Boy Advanced games, uh, this will not work with that because it does rely upon uh, connecting up to uh, original hardware or hardware that thinks it's original 
original, and uh, those emulation uh, clone consoles will not work with this at all. So overall, though, these are a, a really good uh, little thing to get, especially if you are a Game Boy enthusiast, and uh, they're not that expensive. This one's about $88. This one's just about $100, so they're not cheap, but if you are someone who really cares about this platform and uh, want a way to uh, play your games safer without having to take them out of the box or risk damaging them or losing them somewhere along the way, you can load up all your ROMs onto these devices here, play games you could never play before, do the homebrew stuff and the fan translations and emulation, for example, on the Game Boy Advance. You've got a lot of options now uh, by picking up one of these things to start bringing in uh, some more modern stuff into your uh, retro gaming life. And I really do uh, like playing retro games on the original hardware. I really began to appreciate this more and more after I got in a few of those FPGA-based consoles like the uh, the analog NT uh, Mini that I got a few weeks ago, where uh, those are simulating how the original hardware works. And for someone who grew up with these games, that felt closer to how the games looked and felt and played uh, than emulation has for me. And that's something that I've been really kind of going back to over the years, is just trying, making sure I don't forget uh, how this stuff works. And that's why playing on the original hardware is such a big deal to me. And especially the Game Boy 2 is one of the first, actually the first system, at least the one that I had, that uh, would allow you to take multiple games with you on the road, because for the most part, uh, those of us who were video gamers, our only option for portable gaming uh, back in the 80s was uh, those little tiger handhelds and some of those watches that just had those really basic digital games. Uh, these really, this thing really changed the game dramatically that you could have game cartridges just like your home console that you could take with you and the games were really good. They were very close even though they were black and white at the time. Uh, they were very close to uh, some a, a console experience at that point. It was an 8-bit processor in here just like it was on the home console and I think Nintendo made a very good choice by not jumping into the 16-bit war right away and coming up with a, a really excellent handheld platform that uh, lasted for a very long time. Remember, the original Game Boy came out in uh, 89. I think it lasted for almost 10 years before they came out with the Game Boy Colors. So this gives you an idea as to just how long this platform lasted for them, and they uh, continue to really do quite well in the handheld market, and uh, these cartridges are, oops, are a great way of experiencing that for yourself. This is Lon Seib, and hopefully it still works, and thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Brian Miller. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.